consistent. You know, Sven Skaren, you compare the Mundo games that he had, you know, yesterday. I do think that a lot of the invades he went for uh, really was not paying attention to lane states and to who could actually be there to back him up. And that's something that you always have got to be paying attention to. But speaking of lane states, you expect Impact to be pushing. You expect him to be looking good when he gets this Renekton, which is almost always banned against him. So this is going to be a, a strong 2v2 that they could play around. I would be surprised if they don't lock it in, because generally speaking, if it's left up, they always grab it, but maybe prioritizing this Hecarim instead. Well, Fate God's most played top laner is Renekton, and obviously with all the bans, it can't be the case for Impact, but it is what he prioritizes. But no, mm -hmm. these teams are both saying, look, Hecarim is on the rise. It, it, I mean, we saw it obviously in the last game, and it went really well. You know, good job with closing 100 Thieves, but Dardox put multiple games onto it, and this is just kind of the way we're going. It's like, look, you can get wrecked if you want. You can play top lane pressure, but we're going to take, you know, uh, Dardoch's most prized champion, and we're playing some engage here. Sven Skirin's now going to be his third pick on Hecarim. Mm -hmm. Going to be grabbing that for themselves. We'll have to see where Dean Tuss does want to take us. Callista blind. That nice, is nice, sure. really surprising to me. Uh, Got some Shadow Isle synergy, you know? <laughs> it makes a pretty good deck. Uh, Hecarim summons the Ephemerals, and uh, Callista levels up when you lose three of them. So, uh, little Legends of Runeterra, you know, by the way, play the new set. It came out. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understood some of those words. <laughs> I don't play Legend of the Ring Terra. That, that's, um, I just remember, sorry, as an aside, uh, when TFT first came out, and uh, there, was a, there was an LCS team that just locked the full... Um, oh, yeah, uh, full Glacial the Comp. The Frozen Comp. Yeah. They, yeah, they did six that Glacial. Like, that's kind of cute. But either way, to, to get back to the game a little bit yeah. here, I'm, I'm actually very surprised to see Callista blind. You know, Callista generally is only used to really punish some of the, the weaker laners. You know, you see sometimes, like, if there's an Ezreal blind or something, people are like, all right, Callista, let's slam this guy. Or maybe a Kai'Sa, and you go for this Callista Thrash, and you really try to get aggressive. But doing it blind, you know, definitely does have the ability to pick something a little bit more safe. You know, maybe this is just saying, oh, actually, definitely, you don't really play anything except Kai'Sa. Show us something new because he has eight games on the champion. So maybe that's the bet. You know, this is, they're kind of giving definitely the impact treatment where people kind of pre counter pick saying, you're just going to pick Kaisa anyway, so who cares? I don't need to wait. I already know what you're going to play. And I want to see if that's actually the case. You know, I hope that definitely would bring something out a little bit different here. Uh, EG kind of being given a lot of comfort, though. The Orianna most played for Jizuke. Yes, impact. You know, this is not his most played because it's banned against him 70% of the time, but he is going to be grabbing that Renekton. Really strong engage here already for Sven Skaren. So I, I question, you know, the wisdom of, of the draft thus far for Ding Thus. I, uh, I'm curious if it's actually Callista Flex. Nope, it's not. Uh, that's a NAR pick right there. But I'm like, I, I wonder what that matchup looks like. Callista's been a top laner before. And with, like, Cleanse, maybe you win the 1v1 post-stun and you kill him with Ren. But nope, they're going to take NAR as the answer. They really just wanted lane priority. And I think this is Dignitas saying, look, we want to play with an aggressive. We want to play with an aggressive bot lane. And we want to make sure we have at least one solo lane counter pick. We want either support counter pick or we want solo counter pick. So we're unwilling to take any role but bot. And if, and if you look at stats, you look at pick rates, uh, Neo's second most played is Callista. This is now pick number four. It's right behind Kai'Sa itself. So it says, look, this is what I'm comfortable on. I'm not willing to blind Kai'Sa. At least our comp doesn't want to. We want to make sure everyone else's lane is comfortable. And indeed, they'll get counter pick in both solos. Uh, and if they really want it, I mean, I guess they get counter pick and support too. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to see exactly where they do take us. And Kai'Sa's actually banned out. So it's not going to be thrown down there as, as kind of an answer to Kai'Sa. Um, you know, Santa has been banned, Kaisa has been banned, you know, maybe just feeling like definitely doesn't have a good answer, but I do think that you could go towards something even like a Caitlyn and be very happy against this. You know, we did see Caitlyn come out um, for Cloud9. I think MF is a really strong laner that's pretty hard to punish for Kalista as well. Uh, so I do think that there's an opportunity for them to look for something like that, but perhaps it's more about setting up for, for a creative support pick for Aphromoo. You know, maybe he has something that he thinks can answer whatever might be brought out. Uh, double marksman bans here toward Deathly, so very clearly they're trying to herd him towards something. I'm just not really that sure what it is. Taking a long time there. Zoe is the answer. We saw Dezuke hover. Zoe and Lucian is like, so like you're picking one of these two. Like we know what your kind of picks are. Just just show me which one you want it to be. Zoe's gonna be banned away, so Lucian is the more likely answer based on what Jazuke showed us. We'll see what actually comes out of this one. I would expect mid lane first, unless you think there is a highly prized support that hasn't been dropped off. Uh, mm -hmm. Rel is available unless my eyes deceive me so that would be yep. the only blind i'd really look at i think also uh, once again seraphine is outstanding and with this kind of composition with the skarner i think seraphine would work here as well so another option but i probably wouldn't blind it so we'll see seraphine that is later banned, on though oh it is oh yeah, yeah. yep uh, i'm i'm trolling 
But Rel is open. It's easy to happen. Yeah. Um, and, and I do think that support last pick here makes sense because you know you have this Callista. When you blind pick the Callista as your first pick, you've got to be winning that lane, I feel like, for the draft to not be a troll. So, you know, going to be using the, the final pick here for Aphromo to try to secure a winning lane. It will be Jinx, so playing towards the additional range that they have there. But definitely something that, that can, if you can get on top of the Jinx, if you can actually have some sort of heavy engage, you can win those 2v2s pretty heavily. Of course, if you're playing Jinx, you're more playing to just farm it out, to push out the waves, uh, and try to not really go as much for the PvP. So it will be Rel, it will be Jinx. And now the question comes, what do you actually go here as Dignitas? Because Rel is already such a good answer into a lot of the dive champions. Like if you go Leona or something, well, Rel already kind of pre-counters that. You could look for a counter to Rel like Janna, but then Janna uh, plus Kalista doesn't really make sense. So you want to go towards Engage. Uh, and it just kind of makes the the Rel pick feel really smart here, honestly. Um, Bard could be interesting, but Alistar makes more sense just for, for the composition as a whole. Uh, I just wonder, you know, how this lane is actually going to work out for them because the scaling yeah. on the side of EG, I just think is incredible. Uh, when you're looking at, you know, a really powerful front line and engage, you have the Orion and Jinx as far as your, your back line. Of course, there is some powerful scaling in the mid lane for a Dignitas. Victor really can take over a game, but I worry how it will look for Neo if he does not get ahead. Uh, because playing a mid-range champion like Kalista into Rel, Orianna, Hecarim, as well as the Renekton in teamfights sounds like a nightmare. You know, it's so easy yeah. to step a little bit too far forward, get flash R'd by Rel, get feared by Hecarim, flash stunned by the Renekton, and just die. Yeah, so I'm looking at this draft, and, and again, I'll circle back to the point that Dignitas clearly won a counterpick on, on top mid support. I think those are the three yeah. most important counter picks in, in League of Legends right now in the current sort of suite of champion fuel play. So, okay, I get it for that case, right? You blinded bot, you blinded uh, jungle. Okay, and Skarno's good, whatever. And he said, okay, well, with only like Senna and Seraphine banned, I'm not really willing to blind Kaisa, so Callista will be safe in every matchup I can think of. And like, okay, I see it through that lens as well. But then you look at the matchups they got, and you got Victor Oriana, which, like, 50, that feels like a wash. Out. Right. And you got Gnar Renekton, which is like, if you told me you blinded Gnar and you're against Impact, so you picked Renekton, I would have believed that too. So I'm not even sure what you got when the other matchup is Alistair Rel, which is like, maybe it's a bit Alistair favor, but, like, he got Rel. Like, everyone wants Rel already. Like, she's already yeah. the most picked support. So what did you get out of this draft? Then I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it doesn't feel like they really got any counters. Um, you know, and, and some credit is deserved, of course, by EG for, for how they drafted around this. But I, I do think that, you know, Dignitas, the Callista, you know, you, I get your reasoning like you're talking about, okay, well, maybe you just say, okay, this can't be punished or whatever. But yeah. picking picking Callista as, okay, like they can't counter me, we'll farm, that's not really why you pick the champion, right? Generally, you pick Callista to slam lane, to dominate. Yeah. Maybe they'll be able to do that. Maybe they feel that the additional pressure that they could have from Skarner is going to make it worthwhile. Of course, Afro on the Alistar is always good outside of lane, so maybe feeling like they really have uh, the compositional advantage in 5v5 just due to the nature of the engage that they could pull off. We will find out as Ignar. Ooh, Ignar wanted right a cheeky play by dismounting, and then he wanted to go into horsey form and, and mm -hmm. kick someone back. But Dignitas spotted it out and said, no, 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 we're going to put some damage onto you. Ignar will recall in time, uh, but it does mean Dignitas get complete control to push into the jungle, feeling very, very safe. Doesn't mean much. It's a single ward that's going to spot uh, Raptors, which is the very likely Hecarim start. Doesn't do much Maybe. else. Um, the defensive ward's going to spot in case it's Hecarim invade. You can see in the uh, northern jungle there's one. Uh, mm -hmm. So they'll have very good info on where Svenskeren is. Uh, he's either starting a camp on a ward or he's not, which means they know where he is anyway. Worth noting, five phase rushes <laughs> in this game. We have Alistar, oh, wow. the Victor, the Skarner, the Hecarim, the Orianna. Uh, phase rush here on Svenskeren. It's not guarantee that he's going to be going towards the tank, but it does feel like uh, largely when we've been seeing the Divine Thunderer builds, people have been going for the Conqueror. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that this is actually, you know, the Chem Tank once again, similar to what we saw last game from Closer. Uh, yeah. Going Phase Rush, of course, on the Alistar does mean you are forgoing the early tankiness, you know, that, that power for potential all-ins or even just 2v2 trading for that of the utility of being able to catch up and actually land that Trample Stun on someone, even sometimes after they have Flash. So uh, there is a trade-off there, but you've got to be careful now about getting locked up here um, by Rel potentially, because when you don't have that aftershock, you are a lot more vulnerable in this bottom lane. Oh. Alice produces every level one. Crash down's not going to get too much. Afro gets his pull prize off, but keep in mind, it's phase rush. Alistair doesn't have a keystone right now. 
loses half his health bar off a crash down plus some rocket autos. Good job to EG, obviously playing that one nicely. But Ignatas are behind in this lane until at least level three based on lane state and the health they've lost already. And this mid lane is trading very heavily. You know, it is not powerful ganking junglers, so they are less worried about it, I think. Uh, but you can see they're both kind of chugging through those potions pretty quickly using two charges of that Corrupting Potion. They both have Biscuits. Zuke actually out of that already. So I think he wants to really just try to play this very aggressively to try to reset the wave. He's willing to spend his mana. And this is something that Jazuke does a lot. You know, it's kind of just a stylistic choice for him. Uh, as we'll stop that. Flash headbutt Pova definitely. He flashed the way. Nice crash on a two. And Neo just has no health left. Single auto would have killed him. Has to flash. Summoner advantage. I'm going to say it goes to EG off that one. Four sums to three plus mm -hmm. the health bars. And Neo can regen, but well done to Ignar. Definitely. And you can't re-engage now because the heal is still available, which is so critical when the Ignite is not up. Ignatas tried to go for that all in. They nearly had it, but it was incredible peeling there for Ignar. And now going in. Ooh, the Hex Flash was huge. Afro is under 200 HP. You're not going to get much more with this chase down. Neo can try for a bit. Not going to get more nicely done. Ignar is going to feel real good about this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually really love the remount engages. That's something I talked about in the, in the Realm Mechanics Breakdown I did a while ago. Uh, his impact. I don't know if you want to chase this, man. Darduk is a lot closer than your jungler, and it will force Spence yep. here to pop the ghost to just try to get up there to defend him, uh, but not going to be able to take that fight. Uh, and I think you likely lose this scuttle here, too. I don't really know what Spence Garen's doing. Yeah, battling for this fire back and forth. Now that it's, now that it's, it's captured, Darduk just wins this outright. Spence Garen, why are you still here? Spence Garen, why are you still here? First blood comes through, a nice flash. Jump for fake god. Grabs first blood for Dignitas. I mean, that was just so troll. Like, that was so bizarre to watch. Uh, we'll see if Impact can get anything done here. I mean, now you gave over double buffs to the enemy Nar, but it's like he already had no ghosts. So you have no yep. summoner. You know Dardoch can take up. Both have flash. You have no health. Yeah. Your mid laner is not coming. Your top laner is lower health and pushed in. Yeah. I, I just can't fathom what you thought you were doing there. And it almost feels a little bit mm -hmm. like the Mundo game from yesterday where some of the invades just didn't really make sense. But this was more egregious, to be honest. There's no reason he should have stayed and you just gave over a free first blood and double buffs to a ranged top laner, which kind of ruins your Renekton's laning phase here too. I mean, it's like, okay, I get you want to you want to scrap for that, but why are you staying now? Skarner's full you health. Stay. Yep. Impact is up in top lane. He's way far away. Oriana is moving now, but you have no summoner to react. So Darduk didn't even have to flash to get the kill. Like you could have gotten yep. E'd by the Skarner and then flash stunned and not even be able to react. So uh, really, really, really poor play, honestly, from Svenskar and giving over a freebie. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to Darduk having just better taste in TV and movies. He ain't afraid of no ghost and, <laughs> you know, gets the easy kill on Svenskar. And I'm it like, was, where it was are you a free going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and here's another battle, level either. five to four. Uh, bot lane pressure though means they get this crab. Mm -hmm. Smite fight? Wait, easy, no easy smite. smite. Yep. Hit it again, I dare you. 440? Oh, they baited him. That was beautiful. Dart acts in a bad spot, but the re-engage here comes the TPs. Here comes everyone. What can fake got show up? He's not there just yet. There's a head but pull up the late TP for the Gnar, but it's already too late for Aphromu. He's not tanky, and they're gonna get a second Ignar find solely go. Fake got that was late. EG capitalized, and Dardak could just run, run, run for his life. Is the one kill, though, for EG. So nicely done. Excuse me, two kills for them. They yep. finished off Saligo as well. That was a scuttle that he could actually go for. Of course, wasn't going to win the 1v1, but did have bot lane pressure, as you said. The DP was much faster there for impact as well. And honestly, they, they just narrowly missed out on getting even more kills. This is really good stopping above the amount he could actually deal with the smite damage, then turning on to him, attract repel. The crash down had to be flashed there from Dardox. And the biggest difference maker is look how much earlier the TP is from impact, right? The TP is finished channeling before Fake God really even starts his. So the kills have already come through as Fake God arrives and he can't really do anything. Neo had a good hop to actually get over those traps. Otherwise, he likely would have gone down as well. Dardox able to proc phase rush and run out of there. So nicely done by him, but EG battling back and back into a gold lead here. All right, well, Fake God level six, but he's going to go back to mini before Impact really fights with him. So functionally, no ultimate right now for Fake God. Mm -hmm. As a Minion R cannot press R. It's uh, just not doable. So look at the game, though. It's only really about a sub-100 gold lead for EG. So the kills and assists have kind of washed out against the laning phase leads themselves. Fake God himself being about 10 CS in this lane. Certainly a part of it, a large reason why. But honestly, still feels very good for EG based on the fact that that last fight looked really good. They had scuttle control, and if their bot lane can push again, they can get first dragon. And honestly, just on, based on the fact that 
your your bot lane is ahead and they have Callista and you have Jinx, right? You know, that that is a pretty scary prospect if you are Dignitas, the fact that Jinx is, is not being punished whatsoever here. Of course, there is a possibility of them still finding an all-in kill. Maybe you get Afro and Neo to six and they can look for some sort of an all-in, but things going very well right now for EG. The lane is pushing out away from them, so they're gonna have to be a little bit safe here as they have no vision in the river or around that dragon. But Svenskaren is clearing his red and making his way down towards bot, so could cover them potentially if they feel that they need it to push out. A little bit of mid lane clear back and forth. Gonna get one more minion there. Crash not gonna find after move, but they could get more. Cannot find the attract repel stun. And now Ignar is gonna be the target of attention. He can't even burn Aftershock back in because he's got no CC abilities left up. So good trade, good fight. The Gantaz mm -hmm. getting the better of that one as Ignar's got to regen through his refillable yet again. Still a level lead for Fate God with that extra farm. And the fact that he TP'd late, I think he got more of the wave as well. So he can try to bully impact, but not getting that much done. I mean, he's getting him a bit lower, but not sure what his gains are going to be long term. I mean, it's kind of tough because impact is getting fairly low. If you get much more chip, he has no teleport. And that's where you start to really get a big advantage, right? If you, if you get too low, the dive can be threatened. I mean, he's down to about a third health, and that's a Meganar. So, you know, even, even if you're Fake God and you just Mega him into the wall for the trade, you yeah. can probably force oh. a reset. That felt like a mega opportunity right there. As Impact jumped in for the W, I felt like you could have just pressed R there and gotten some decent damage. Didn't go for the fight, though. End of the day, there's still a Hecarim nearby as well. And now he's back to mini. So now suddenly, I think the pressure has changed around. Yeah. Uh, thankfully for Fake Out, he sees the Hecarim, though. There's already a uh, Scuttle. So uh, Sven and his, his location's known. But that was kind of a window of opportunity where he could have punished and created a pretty big advantage. He didn't miss it. you know. And I think you have an opportunity when you are playing this matchup. When the Renekton is under tower like that and actually goes to clear the ranged minions, you just make an arm against the wall, right? Like, you don't have to have the all-in kill. Uh, but when he's down to about 30% like that, if you make him into the wall, at the very least, you're going to probably force his ultimate out, if not kill him. And at that point, if he has to take a bad base and you get to shove in the wave, maybe take a plate, or even just get even further up on that pressure, then it can become really tough to actually compete in these melee versus range matchups because you can start to get too far behind, can no longer threaten any sort of all-in or really kind of counter-attack if he is poking away at you. Uh, and that's where things can get really out of hand, but not yeah. be the case. Want to point out EG making uh, a play similar to the one we saw in the previous game. It's very common for teams to swap their dual lanes top side at the eight or nine minute Herald play. But now twice in a row, we're seeing the Herald Eye being donated to one of the members of the bottom lane, of the duo lane, which honestly to me makes sense. You are almost always giving the gold to one of these players anyway. Uh, I feel like you're really freely trying to give it to someone like Jinx, uh, especially when you've got Jinx, she's, she's going to scale really, really well. So if she's getting the, the share of gold anyway, it's going to be in her lane anyway. Why yeah. not let her get full plate gold? Yeah, exactly. That way, the jungler doesn't have to get any plate credit. I'm sure junglers <laughs> aren't <laughs> up for that. But, I mean, you know, all the gold can just be donated straight into that Jinx. Aphromoot waiting to set up a trap here. But Sven Skaren, I think, has done a really good job anytime they need to push in. You know, he was down there bot lane when they were trying to reset. Now he's recalling behind them top lane, giving them the safety to push up and reset that wave. I think has been everywhere he needed to be, despite that mistake over by that top lane scuttle. But now he has fully reset and Dardock is up here. Should be spotted by that pink ward, but Jizuke pressuring mid and will be able to continue to do so knowing that the Skarner is top. Yes, indeed. Here we go. Little fight in the bottom side. Thank God takes the big stun from Impact, but he's very tanky with the uh, plated steel caps in. Nice sidestep by Impact. Saw the clock tower, but here comes the play. Dodges, not quite the stun, ulted back in, but yeah, Impact, he's got too much rage. Well. He gets the big Q on the wave, though. Flash done. He's got Hecarim coming on as well. May not have time for the charge. He's going to try. Does get him into the wall. And that is Fate God going down. Never had a chance to get the Flash to get away. Hecarim could have always followed. Nicely done by Impact to set it up. And Sven Skaren to help knock it down. Yeah, really good job there. Sven Skaren closing the distance so quickly. Has the Tier 2 boots. Pop the Ghost early. And is able to get down there in time to support his top laner. The Flash empowered stun was there. And now Impact can even out the farm, can even get a turret plate or two here, potentially. Dardock looking for a play, though. Does have Flash Ultimate available. Uh, Jizuke yeah. will have to be a little bit careful about that, but has Svenskaren behind him. If he's in range, he gets it, but with Svenskaren waiting, it's going to be a tough one. Svenskaren's actually managed to get a level lead back temporarily as well, whether that's from kind of sharing in some lane farm or not. It's still a well-done kind of play. Extra play taken bottom side. I'm not sure if Impact got the gold. I don't know if he tagged it. He did Obviously whack his... it. He did hit it? Okay, so we got 160. Yeah, so should be able to be in a pretty good position now. He got a kill off the TP, he got a kill off that fight down in bot side, now got a plate, so should be up in gold, all things considered. Jizuke doing what Jizuke does best, playing aggressively, liking to push in, 
Uh, he's one of the mid laners that prioritizes the early laning phase, I think, almost more than really anyone else. He, he buys so many early laning items. You know, often you'll see him with three, four early laning items. You know, this game he has the Corrupting Potion, the tier, he has the Dark Seal, and rushes tier two boots. So that's pretty common for him to go for that, to really try to shove in, to try to tax uh, his opponent's resources and, and really put them on the back foot. And so far this game, he has been able to get plate out of that. Bot lane going to be able to grab first tower, though, and that's going to put Deathly at an even better spot. Glista really just hasn't been able to get involved or create any sort of advantage. So as EG, you're, you're laughing. If you can just keep Ooh. up this sort of game pace and really avoid fighting, the Jinx is going to be at one, two items before there's any pressure. Absolutely. That was going to be the concern is, hey, you know, Jinx, uh, as a champion, really does not have the luxury of going for a Quicksilver Sash. She is mm -hmm. so gold-based and so stat-based that stopping by, you just aren't a champion if that's your build. And definitely now has no problem. Uh, here we go, flash play, nice pulverize, nice headbutt, Ignar, one hit away, and Fake God will claim the kill. Nice job with Hyper, hops away. Really beautiful by Afro, really, really nice mm -hmm. setup there. And then it gets a kill back on the board, and Neo still just hitting this top lane turret. Yeah, he won't get first turret gold, but consider the fact that Deathly had to share all of that, Neo's probably got more gold than Jinx now. Yeah, that's really nicely done. Afro recognizing he could get down there, could make the play on the tanky member. Taking Ignar out. He does have his Moby Boots online here. And of course, Aphromu is going to be very reliable as a playmaker. Has been really good for Dignitas and honestly really good, you know, pairing up with a lot of these rookies. Did it with Johnson, now doing it with Neo. Uh, have been some pretty successful duos for him. You know, every time he seems to be able to come into a team and really add a lot of value through playmaking, uh, through the confidence he instills, I think, in his teammates. You know, he's someone when you, you listen to him in interviews, he has a lot of faith in his teammates and wants to enable them to play the game aggressively, to play the game with confidence, which I think really shows in Neo. It's nice to see. You can see actually as the items come through, in fact, Neo does have more gold. Uh, up, uh, you know, three to 400, I believe, uh, right now in, in sort of total inventory value, which is going to be nice. And, uh, you know, I would have liked to see Ignar walk away when Botlane Turret was certain to die, when it went down the two plates near the Herald Summon. Like, you'll, you'll still get plate gold, but you wouldn't have taken local turret gold if you walked away right away. So some money siphoned away from a Jinx, which I think is kind of a silly mistake. But it's time for the Dragon Fight. That's the important part here. Dignitas have gotten a lot with their Dragon Souls so far this LCS season. And as they knock down the wards, I mean, they've got the Mythic on the AD carry. EG does not. That's going to be a real consideration in this game, but right now, not that comfortable. Fake God's putting the top side. Most of the way towards Meganar. If you're going to go for the play, you're going to go for the play in about 10 seconds as the Meganar is pretty much filled up. You've got to go pretty much right now. 2K health. Here comes TP come with Mega. Here comes the fight. So we got to push away to Zuke. The four on five could look really good. Fake God's going to have the transform, but can he get the team fight? Jumps in. They find a pullback on the one. It's Fenskaren staying alive. Meganar in the two. And a steal comes across. Nicely done for Dardock. But the other side of the fight. It's a one for one so far. Impact cannot get rendered away. Shockwave will not land from Dezuke. But Soli goes got to run out of this one. Got to be careful. Neo goes back in. Can't win against Deathly, though. Got to keep running. Got to get away from the zap. Dardock barely stays alive. The fight is plus one for evil geniuses, but Dardock did claim the dragon. They were so close to an ace, though, honestly. If definitely could have got a couple more autos out, maybe could have looked to actually flash aggressively there at some point and really clean that fight up. But him not actually having his completed mythic, imagine if he had a, a Kraken at that point in the game. You know, maybe that is the difference. So actually just completely running them over. Ignar, though, doing a good job peeling Fake God as he came in keeping Deathly safe here to just be punishing Dignitas with those rockets, constantly getting the AoE, got the first reset, and here's where I thought he might have been able to try to go aggressively to look for a flash in. Jizuke, though, whiffing on the Shockwave, and as Neo came through, they did push Deathly back. He does now have his Kraken Slayer completed, but importantly for Dignitas, they grabbed the Dragon, so they have their second one, and it is going to be Infernal, so generally one you see people contest for pretty heavily. Yeah, that'll be a big one. We'll see what that happens. Infernal Soul is such a big deal. You're you're one-shotting a lot of people in this kind of composition. The you know the Skarner pulling someone in, everyone getting the uh, you know Infernal Soul pop makes that mm -hmm. impale that much deadlier. Chem tank done for both junglers. Indeed, we are heading towards the Turbo Chem tank sort of meta in a way for Hecarim especially. Part of the reason probably why he's been prioritized. People discovered a stronger build on him, and it's like suddenly. He's a fast clear and he's an engaged tank jungler. This is everything we wanted. Like, you know, flexibility in team comp where we can play more than just fighters. We can play hard engaged, but he clears a jungle with the appropriate spacing. So here you go. This is the composition that EG are going to be running. And they get the second Rift Herald here. Svenskeren walks it. 
And off he goes, looking maybe topside. There's a turret to knock down over there. So it is interesting to see that this game, Impact is just going for the Gore Drinker. We have in, in this matchup actually seen him go towards Prowler's Claw and some of the aggressive kind of more 1v1 style options to be able to chase down that Gnar. But this time around, it feels like he's prioritizing more that tankiness in team fight. Dardock though, looking for a gun, maybe. Doesn't ult Sven scare and thought it wasn't gonna work. Maybe thought, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get Sven to ult, right? I'm in range. If you're if you're unstoppable, I can't pull you, so just ult away. And Sven Scaren's like, oh, we're good. You don't go for it. It's not gonna matter. And, and indeed, so uh, the sort of uh, bluff by Dardock doesn't get anything done. Sven Scaren is completely safe, of course, and has no problem walking back out of this one. Mid lane still under siege though, and uh, the wave clear is not bad for Victor, of course, but EG might be looking to dive. They've got Rift Arrow. This turret's gone. Yeah, the turret's dead, so Dignitas kind of just have to back it up to the Tier 2. We'll see if they want to try to defend at that Tier 2, but Impact and Sven Scaring could cut Fake God off here, potentially. And it will just be the disengage. We won't actually be able to walk that Rift Herald in for the second charge here, but second outer now locked down here for EG. We just would have that top one remaining, but staying around mid lane. So it really does seem like they want to try to set up for some sort of a fight. There's no objective here right now, so I'm a little bit surprised they don't just send their bot lane top to try to pressure for that turret. EG feel like they're posturing very heavily to look for some sort of a scrap. Alrighty. Well, easy blue buff to Dardock. He can probably hand that one over. There's no threat, so slowly can get his own mana regen. Mythic's done mostly across the board. Supports are waiting. Probably chem tank for Alistair would make the most sense. Uh, not sure if we're going to go for the same here on Ignar just yet, but... Uh, looks like not. Looks like that's more like should be, be lock it. Yeah, lock it, I think, based on the components. Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense, right? In, the, in this style of composition, especially when you have a Jinx, and generally speaking, you want to be peeling for that Jinx, having the locket there uh, for that shielding to try to potentially keep him alive through any sort of burst is going to be a pretty big deal. And over with the Bombing Cinder, you are expecting that, of course, to get the Chem Tank here for Afro. Having the Phase Rush, having the Chem Tank, Moby Boots here. He is looking to go in. He is looking to pick people in transition. And that is always something you have to be worried about with the Afro move. The claim on that Spire. Spensker is still being given red buffs right now. It's not really worth the efficiency loss of handing over to a Jinx, who's not going to teamfight with it. So you keep letting the Hecarim get the gold and the bonus XP and scale on up and up. Level 11 going to be coming in after this camp, so rank 2 ulti, more damage, more stats overall. Should feel pretty solid. But otherwise, we're just kind of clearing waves back and forth and waiting. We haven't had a real fight since the last dragon. This one coming up in mm -hmm. 20 seconds. Yeah, and I think that's what they're looking for here. You know, on the side of EG, it feels like they don't they don't have any pressure on them to really make anything happen. So it feels more on Dignitas to be the ones trying to push the pace of the game. I think that EG are more comfortable playing out this slower game style. You know, with the Orianna, with the Jinx, uh, they are going to be really happy to go for that. To just try to scale it up and you know, get more gold in the pockets here of this Jinx. But right now, Dignitas they are go. starting up this dragon. And Dignitas do have wow. two items on Neo, so he is really strong right now. Yes, he got the Hurricane Power Spike just at like 20 seconds till Dragon and Fake God is Meganar for another 15, well, 10 seconds here. They gotta go pretty quickly though, stacking up the spears. Should be an easy rend. Gonna just stun the Renekton. What? You gotta be kidding me! Sven Scaren gets the steal and he dives right in towards Dardock. Hard Engage comes across, rocket to the top. How about the rest of the fight? Sven Scaren in the back line. He is tanky, but he's gotta be careful. An Impale grabs him and that's nicely done as Neo claims the kill. Impact stays in brush, waiting for the re engage. Azuke knocks on Aphromu. Neo going back in, goes for Azuke, tries to be the hero, knocks him down with the pierce. But watch out for the other half. Definitely has a Lot of damage. Sidestep on the zap. Definitely and solely go trading blows. Shield bow pops for Neo. And impact is still bodyguarding. Once again, team fight is plus one, but the dragon this time around goes EG. EG get that. That is critical that they were able to steal that one away. That would have put Dignitas one dragon away from Soul. A big win condition for them. But Neo picks up a lot of kills here. And again, definitely just barely not able to get that damage through to finish off multiple low HP members there at the beginning of the fight. You can see the initial flash engage, Afro with the counter engage, flashing, knocking up four members, and definitely you're just not able to quite get enough damage here. Impact with him going in, looks for that stun, but Saligo was able to flash away in time to avoid that, and then Neo on the other side, as definitely an Impact were taking their scrap, Neo went aggressive, took down multiple members here, and Saligo Neo, as well as Fake God, all just a couple autos of health remaining, but definitely couldn't quite finish him. 
Gotta say, I was really impressed with Neo that entire fight. He dodged every zap I ever saw, and he was like, I see ball, that's Shockwave. And just like walked back as two teammates got Shockwave. He's like, nah, dude, I saw that one. And then right back in, says, I have to kill Dezuka, this fight's over. Neo was MVP level in that fight. It was really beautiful, impressive stuff. Because he got a triple, he earned, you know, a thousand or so gold off that yeah. fight. He's gonna have a, a zeal, or if he super needs a QSS for some reason, that can come in. But I think really until you hit like three full items on Jinx, you're going to be outperformed by a Callista. Like she just does more damage, not to mention the obvious gold lead that this player has. So Neo going towards with likely a Bloodthirster should look really good here still. Yeah, and I think he's just performing very well. You know, you pointed out you know how he was dodging a lot of these abilities and champion champion power aside. You can still outplay. You can still outperform just simply through positioning. You know, he did have the killer instinct there to get very aggressive while still being able to avoid a lot of those abilities. And in both fights, you know, definitely played it well, got out damage, but, you know, didn't really ever take a, a moment to go aggressive. You know, held on to the flash in both of those fights with three members at very low HP from Dignitas. There may have been opportunities for him to try to get a little bit more aggressive and, and finish some of them off, but that's high risk, high reward, right? You know, if you flash in there and just get stunned up and instantly die, you look really really foolish. Chomper's down in case there's a uh, Skarner under the turret flash play. Ultimately, there isn't one, so whatever. Uh, and yeah, back back they go. You can see, uh, you know, practically a half item lead for Neo right there. Has components mm -hmm. BT. Definitely just barely has Hurricane done. He finished it, you know, basically for that wave clear. Uh, as the top laners kind of scuffle back and forth. Obviously, 4-0-2, great for impact, but Big God has a bit of control still. And I like this, it's definitely running around, being wave control. EG has incredible wave clear, by the way. Uh, Rockets, Hurricane Jinx, Orianna as well. It's just absurd yeah. at knocking a minion wave. It's very, very hard to siege those. Chompers kind of blocked that as well. So uh, sieging will be very, very tough on the Dignitas side. They will, and because Venskiren stole the dragon, they bought themselves a lot more time to scale, right? Because that's the biggest thing, is that... All right, around the map they go. Evil geniuses still playing the top side river. Azale, uh, I don't know if you are still talking. You would cut out for me. Um, don't know if that's what's happening for everyone else though, so apologies to the stream if I'm talking over him. Otherwise, we're going it alone for now. Hopefully that uh, you know, everything's gonna work out in the end. So, Neo, MVP of this game. Yeah, he's, he's a POG champ right now, knocking down the mid lane. I like how he just devolve into the Twitch chat memes as soon as I don't have someone to keep me in check. This is good, this is an improvement. Um, Jizuke still wave clearing. The big thing though, of course, Dragon in 50 seconds. Look at the wards, that's the important part. EG have it slightly better. There's competing control wards in that brush. Neo is actually not willing to go for it. It figures, you know, if Ignar flash stuns me, I'm dead, that control ward can't get cleared. Afro feels pretty safe. Again, Faces Alistair is ulti or you're just made of paper. So he's only tanking for five seconds in a team fight. Dardock feels okay to go for a ward, but mid lane control means Jinx can't show, which means Dardock has to leave. And EG, I feel like every single time, have owned the river. They have had better vision control around this side of the map. And Dignitas have been the ones kind of walking in to make it happen. Ignar finds in. himself stunned. Sven scaring. Oh, getting pushed back. Fake God gets a double ulti, but doesn't find stuns with it. Doesn't get a whole lot done. Dardock flashes in, finds the Jinx. Is there enough follow through? Shockwave by his time, but it's still going to be the kill. Trade for the jungler. Solo go drops down as well, though. Impact getting so much done. Fake God dropping low, and Neo has to flash away to stay alive. The other members of Dignitas get so much done, but only for a single kill. It's EG who do better. They didn't need Deathly, they had everyone else. It is a three for one team fight, and this dragon is free. Everything was spent to kill Deathly there, and EG, the other four members coming up big, the re-engages, everyone from Dignitas piled in to finish off that Jinx. They were able to do it, but then you have Impact on the Renekton here on top of everyone. He is incredibly strong at this point. The TP flank from Dignitas was good. You see Aphromoo pushing Svenskeren out, and then they get in on top of Deathly here. The flash, the pull, laser across the top, but watch Impact. He's on Soligo as Soligo is on Deathly, and yes, Deathly does go down, but Impact had gotten out so much damage in the middle of the team, killing off the victor, pushing out the Kalista, Jazuke getting damage down on the other side, and EG take a resounding team fight win here. Huge yeah. for them at this point of the game. This is Impact. I feel like his mid to late game team fighting is just consistently outstanding. And hey, credit to Jazuke, obviously a good oh. shockwave to the most damage in the team fight, but Impact 6 0 oh, 3. Like, he had a yeah. fine laning phase, went back and forth. His jungler entered first blood over, and he's like, that's fine, whatever, no big deal. I'll keep giving my lane over to Jinx so that she can knock down turret plates, and quietly, 
probably the gold leader of this game. Maybe it's close with Kalista because of all the turret plates he's gotten, but is just hard carrying team fights right now. Dardock gonna look for a little bit done here, but keep in mind Ignar has QSS, so is not an impale target. And ultimately, now, not much more that did not get done. I've got to say, I'm just surprised that Impact keeps getting renamed. This will be <laughs> yeah. his seventh game on it. He still has 100% win rate when you're counting lock-in plus, plus the regular season in spring. He just wins every time he gets Renekton. He is so good on it. It's not that he's just scraping by and barely picking up wins. He is dominating on this champion. His team fighting is incredible. Big His play. laning is really good. Oh, the rest of the damage, they get a headbutt, maybe? Yes, they're gonna push him in, but careful because the rest of the squad is here, definitely finally goes down. Oh, shot but over wave. the top is Hecarim, the rest of the team as well. Dardex low, Afro's gonna be running on his last legs, just barely. It is a two for one, again in favor of EG. Impact being chased down though, Fake God getting a lot ult. done, but be careful, he's back with the ulti. He's got Gore Drinker, he's got a Q. Look at the health bar coming back up. Impact, you're stuck here with me, he says to Fake God, has to flash away, the flash follow! There we go, a solo kill for Fake God. We kept singing Impact's praises. We cursed from the end. But Aphromoo, your days are numbered. Solio's coming around, though, and those numbers might be over 9,000 right now. It's going to be EG running away. Fake God's got Mega. He's got Mega. No, it's on cooldown. I take it back. He doesn't have Mega. He can't get anything done. Fake God, no. You couldn't ult. Oh, no. Fake God, no. Oh, it's uh. a tragedy. <laughs> yeah, definitely hitting him with the cats or curse. Talking about how amazing he is on the Renekton. <laughs> Gets solo killed immediately. I'm sorry, Impact. Fake God, though, big outplay there, but just barely did not have the ultimate as we're going to go back towards this mid lane. The Kalista ulti throwing in Afro right over the top. It was a great uh, track repel stun there coming through from the rel to delay the knockback from Aphromoo, but he still had time to get it off. Knocks the Jinx into the team. Barely escapes there with the phase rush and pretty even trade overall here. But we're looking again towards this next dragon. The Bloodthirster completed for Neo. I think this is about as strong as he's going to get relative to the yeah. Jinx for the rest of the game. Yep. I tend to feel like three items here. You're so powerful. You have an incredible amount of life steal uh, and really can get aggressive in these fights. Jinx did pit stop for the QSS, so the IE is pretty far off. But generally, once Jinx does hit that IE, uh, that is where it's going to be really Ooh, Nice fight. Dardock gets the red away for what would have been deftly, to be honest. They were going to try to hand that one over, so well done, Dardock. That's a, a nice steal away. Honestly, Hurricane Rocket red buff that, yeah, you just you just apply on the enemy team, and it, and it feels bad. But EG just YOLOing this, this Baron right now. Ignar playing defense, and uh, Dardock only... I mean, he's not even realizing it. They don't know. This is a great call by EG. There we go. Oh, Blizzard pop. Dardock's got to be careful. Does have ult does have flash. QSS for Sven Scaring. This could be tight. There's a control to the bush in the pit, I should say. That's not being cleared down the 2K. They're trying to bait in Dardock. They it's down the He's got a flash over. Oh, it's just Zuka who claims it was Shockwave. They get the kill on Dardock as well. And Fake God not going to have a good chance with this fight. He's got an ulti, but will it matter? Ignar finds the engage. Gets Soli go. Fake God gets a stun. Jumps back out. They're going to go back in and they pick off one. They get Ignar. 4v4 team fight. A life stealing Kalista's going to get a lot done as Impact gets stunned. Jazuke goes down. This team fight is going the way of Dignitas, but the Baron went the way of evil geniuses. Fake God will survive this. Impact will not two surviving buffs dragon in 20 seconds should mean soul point for dignitas yeah they should be able to get that here it is the three for one in kills with the baron going the other way so it's going to depend how much more can eg get with this because the initial baron power play is going to be negative after they lose that mid lane tower so let's watch this one more time fake god skirmishing with impact on that bottom side as you see Ignar was trying to keep Dardock out. He goes into the pit. The, the steal does not come through because Jizuke is actually able to secure it. But then Neo had really good positioning here again, dodging out from the engage from Ignar. Ignar trying to retreat, but in that dismounted form, so slow, gets knocked down. And Neo just absorbs the engage there from impact. Life stealing right back up to full. Uh, the Jinx getting pushed out alongside Sven Scared, and they chase down yet another kill here. They will have taken the mid lane tier one during the replay and got the dragon as well so now eg have got to get something done with their couple baron buffs or that was definitely a very negative play because currently uh, it's in dignitas's favor all right sven scaren i want to point this out i think it's actually pretty important uh it is really 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 good for fighters to go for cooks over sash and turn it into silver mirror dawn that's the item on the far right of sven scaren's inventory that item is very efficient you're paying i want to say like a hundred gold for the qss active all things considered 
it's a great item. Obviously, it's worth your mythic passive bonus as well. Uh, so, you know, I think there's a lot of why you, you occasionally see fighters, like, get a really, really early push for Sash, because the upgrade's actually quite nice. Uh, and yeah. you get to throw that at him, and, and he's solid here. So Svenskeren, I think, is in a very comfortable spot. Uh, we'll see, though, what else happens. Obviously, the, the Red Bull Baron, the, the power play kind of keeps fluctuating, a couple hundred gold each way. But, yeah, Dardock just gets away from the choppers in time. Svenskeren's ghosting, though. Doesn't go for the bigger play. Yeah, and then Bates, they pulverize from Aphmu, not much else. I mean, Neo is just getting stronger and stronger. He's on four completed items now, definitely still on two and pieces here. The mid laner is also getting very strong. Death cap completed for Jizuke, so he did go that more expensive route where we see Saligo went for the Void Staff here instead, trying to deal with some of the MR that has been picked up with all these QSSs, as well as some additionally, obviously, on the, the Mythic there for Sven Skarin and the Stone Plate up in that top lane. Um, but, you know, the, these mages are getting to the point where they can do an incredible amount of damage and definitely, thankfully, for EG, actually just completed the IE. So now I think he's going to be a lot more relevant in these fights. You get an AoE, you know, Hurricane Rocket crit or two in a team fight, and that can really change things. But he's still got to be careful because Dignitas have done a good job at actually pressuring him heavily and creating space for Neo to really do well in these fights. Yes, uh, I think Neo's done, been playing them very, very, very well. Definitely, obviously, an assist machine right here. 0, 2, and 11 on Jinx. you would love Feels to have gotten, bad. like, five of those over to, like, convert yeah. one more item across, obviously. can be a really big difference maker. When you're sharing assists with three other people, you're getting, like, 40 gold per kill instead of 300, and you're like, hmm, I could have, like, 3,000 more gold right now. That would be a finished <laughs> Mercurial Scimitar. If, if only I was 11 and 2. Me. <laughs> yeah, if only I was 11 and 2, I'd look way cooler in this game, but... Is what it is. Obviously, Death Cat being done for Dezuke is going to feel outstanding. Stone Plate in for Impact. He's basically unkillable on Sterex Gore Drinker plus uh, Stone Plate. So, yeah, I, EG, I feel like they're in a good spot on basically everyone on the team. Dardock, again, doesn't have good ult targets. There's Quicksilver Sash on three, finds a stun, but unwilling to ult Ignar because what's it going to get for you? Yeah, just going to be able to get that QSS cooldown now at most, but. Unless everyone is there around, can't really punish too heavily. Uh, Fake God has gone very heavily towards the armor as opposed to the MR, has the Randuins, has the Thornmail as well. You know, building to be able to pressure in the side lane to be able to win the 1v1 against Impact. Will make it more vulnerable, of course, against Suzuki, who is very, very strong at this point. You know, there's not a lot of MR over on the Dictus side. There is some. Uh, but it's more been about the armor for them. And we'll see if Jizuke can come up big in these fights. Because once you have that death cap completed, the shockwave really does become pretty threatening. And even for the frontliners, Orianna, if you're consistently hitting those command attacks, you know, as well as the, the dissonance, you can get a lot of DPS out on the frontliners in these fights. Well, 120 to go. Dardock has mostly been very good on smite fights. Certainly has lost a couple. Lost one, I mean, this game against Sven Skarin, and that would have meant they would have already had Dragon yeah. but it happened. But generally speaking, I actually think Dardock has the edge in those kinds of plays. And, Dar and uh, Dignitas has a lot of um, experience, in their words, just flipping it at objectives. <laughs> Although I think a lot of times their, their setup is better than they give themselves credit for. Afro now has to ult, has to headbutt Sven Skarin away, but be careful, because Hecarim still has ult. He will be stunned, though. Has to bring Quips of a Sash, and that means the pull! That means they're gonna one-shot this poor Hecarim. Gallops, running top of the team, finds the fear. Fake got ults back, impact, and they find the re-engage. The headbutt puts him inside the team, though. He's inside the house! He's trying to heal back up. They finally knock him down, and barely Dardock lives. Ding the Haas got just the fight they wanted. If they don't throw this away, they're gonna get Infernal Soul. Beautifully done. The fact that the gravity well was down, Sven Skarin got stunned, and Dardock was there for the punish when QSS was pulled. Beautifully played, and Dignitas can push down maybe for mid lane tier two. Dignitas just outplaying in these fights. Really nice layering of the crowd control there, and then Aphromo going in for what looks like it could be a risky play. You know, Headbutting the Renekton into the middle of your team, but they are able to finish him off. They are able to get that kill, plus both of the summoners off of Jinx, which is massive because there's still flash available on Fake God. And as the Callista ultimate comes back up again, that is going to be really threatening. The potential of throwing Afro in onto that Jinx. So you grab yourself the soul. You are very even in gold, but of course the value from that soul is going to be tremendous. Especially when you have a champion like Victor, who's closing in the death cap, who has those long range lasers to be able to poke away uh, and really proc that Infernal Soul incredibly easily. Alrighty, Dignitas. One thing that's interesting about Dignitas is they are so frequently down in gold. For having a winning record, uh, 
I, I think, uh, you know, it, basically, if, if you graph, like, uh, you know, how much gold do they have every point in the game and average it out across all their games this season, they are on average down gold in the LCS. Hmm. Uh, they have a lot of games like this where they're like, well, we're down 1,000. We've got, you know, 49.8% of the gold in this game. But we got Dragon Soul, so don't worry, we'll win in the end. And then they get a gold lead into the game ending. So they're ahead for so little of the games themselves. Yeah. Uh, but they keep doing it. They're consistently playing games like this where they're into mid game and it's like, well, you're a bit behind, but if you shot call it correctly, if you team fight correctly, you'll win in the end. And every single time, or almost every single time, they shot call it correctly, they team fight correctly, and they come away with it. And now the engage might happen. Dardock has to get away, has to run back, head up pulls, gonna find one. Shotgun catches nothing as the team fight begins yet again. Impact pops the shields. Megadar onto three. A big stun wall comes across. Ignar forced to flash away, and Impact can be re engaged. Into the back lane goes Fenskarin, but it's not gonna be enough. QS has his pop. It's gonna be a one for one. No two already picked up. Neo can't find the kills. They just kite him out. And Fake God finds a single. A triple in the end for Neo. How about the rest of it though? Solego has to run from Impact, who makes it happen. And only the top laners are left the alive. Back. Fake God versus Impact as Impact runs for the hills. Yeah, Impact's got to get away. That's an infernal soul on the Nard. He is very tanky. Impact, oh, nice score trouble. drinker. Oh, a big Q heal though, and he's going to kite him out. Oh, no, he's in the brush <laughs> with the block of four. And Fake God gets the Bud Light Ace. Top diff saying it all, chat. The last man standing, fake God, hitting him with a thumbs up there as he sidesteps the Q from Renekton, takes him down. Let's watch this one one more time. Such a close fight. As we see, the Hex Flash came over from Darda, forcing out the Flash from Jazuke, and critically, he now has no Shockwave. Imagine if he had that for a little bit later with everyone stacked up here. It could have been such a game changer, but instead, the re-engage coming through from Sven and immediately ulted by Dardoch. Neo then going forward here, but he gets stunned up by Impact, allowing Deftly with his dying breath to help take down that Kalista. That was critical. And then Impact able to get one more kill there. Team fighting very well. Was never going to be likely to win this 1v1, though, as Fake God gets the easy chase down and... Dingtas just seems to be team fighting pretty well, but yeah. critical mistake with that shockwave. You know, even if you hit it, would have been one. Ignore the front side, goodbye. Into the back line, they only catch Victor, but is it going to be enough? Megadar into the wall, but here comes the rest of the squad. Headbutt's back, impact, gravity comes down, and Soligo going to stay alive. Re-engage, though, is pretty massive, but it's not enough damage. They've already picked off Jinx, so it's impact once again against the world. Jazuke not in range to help, but it's a very, very tanky crocodile. Goes back oh. in, can't get more than a single kill, but one's good enough to slow them down. No jungler for either side. Aphromoo is so incredibly low. It is a two versus four without smite. I guess Kalista could Kalista. be the saving grace. Yeah, that is your smite. So it's just so hard for EG to actually get in here. Fake God has TP. So he can actually TP flank. If they try to contest this, they will just die, I feel like. But maybe feeling the pressure, thinking they have to stop it. There's multiple wards behind them, though. There's the TP flank. There's TP seven to heal to make sure they don't get burst. And head up, pull over. going to have a CC chain and impact no way away. And Jazuke's yeah. gone as well. Beautifully fought Dignitas. They said, go ahead and try. We've got the squad. And that is an easy bear and pick up Dignitas again and again and again. In the mid to late game, they just fight better than you. And they're going to claim a Baron again. Another nice team fight there for Dignitas. Now have the soul, now have the Baron, and they'll have that Baron when Elder does spawn, which is massive. See how much they can extend the gold lead here with that Red Bull Baron. But definitely made a pretty critical mistake in that fight. He actually used his QSS on the Skarner E stun and then got full ultimated in just to his death. So you've got to really be able to track those in the team fight. There's so much going on, of course. Positioning is so important. But if you misuse the QSS, if you use it before the Skarner Ultimate has come through, you are always going to die in these fights. It just hasn't been able to get the kills, unfortunately for him, hasn't been able to get as much value. And Neo has just been so effective, despite all the talk we had at the start about the scaling of Jinx, about the advantages that they would have if the game has gone long. We're 40 minutes in, and every yep. fight, Neo is getting more done. Neo's playing just so well right now. 12, 2, and 4 is full build. The scaling has stopped for Kalista. Guardian boots Angel two. and Phantom Dancer round out the build. No more boots. That, by the way, means your actual hop distance goes down. That scales with the rank of your boot. Rank zero boots, not a very big hop. Look at that. That's like a half step. You're doing dance moves at that point. It's not even anything special. It's break dance fighting. Yeah, I feel like breakdancing or like capoeira like goes farther than that, you know? Like Neo is just doing one of those like, you put your right leg in, you put your right, like that's Neo's dancing right now. He's two-step fighting.
Just a little back and forth, you know? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> He's freak at the club. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you to assume I go outside. <laughs> All right. Well, they're on the siege here. We'll see what Neo can get done here with his two-step. Definitely <laughs> does have a lot of items, and they have wave clear, but with the Baron buff, it, it's tough to knock down these minions. Dardak wants someone. He's going to look for impact, finds the stun, but finds a lot more in return. It's a flash away, but it still gives an opportunity for the team to push forward. Inhibitor, nearly gone. Fake God's one is going to take the risk. He's Gnar, he's tanky, and he's got hop. So down goes the inhibit mid and bot lane now. Elder Dragon's alive, and by the way, minions will start flooding into the base, but at least they're easy to access, right? It's mid bot with EG going to play around those lanes, but hey, you're trying to outsmite a, a headbutt. You're trying to outsmite a Callista, and there you go. No Back way. goes Fenskaren. They can burn it down in time. Easy pick up there. 22 HP is claimed. Elder Dragon plus Baron. It's time to get out. Can Afro flash? Yes, he can. Can't get the headbutt, but he gets the pulverize. There's the pullback. There's the kill. Goodbye to Impact. Neo on a rampage, and it's time to end the game. Think the toss still with a Red Bull power, uh, Baron power play going at 5,000 gold. They've got Elder Dragon on as well. This has got to be GG. Yeah, you have to think it's all over here unless Jazuke and Ignar can combo up for some sort of an amazing engage. You would need a Shockwave plus Rel combo, but they got to go immediately or it's just going to end. Ignar Flash then finds Soligo, a big hit there. They've knocked him right back in. Beautifully done by Ignar, but is it going to be enough? Meganar hits two. Sven Skaren's going to fall, and it's going to be the rest of it on top as well. More kills going through for Neo. Another one on top, another triple kill, another Bud Light Ace. And Dignitas will be the second team to reach 10 wins in LCS 2021. This team is on a roll. 17 kill Callista game. I was a doubter. The first pick, blind pick Callista. Didn't think they were going to be able to make it work. But what team fighting coming through here for Dignitas. First team to get a win against Impact Renekton as well. Neo's happy. He's dancing down there. And what a, what a performance from him, honestly. What a team. It's incredible to think that this team is sitting up near the top of the table, 10 wins, more wins than teams like Team Liquid. And you look at the rosters and it's like, the expected value versus what you got out is incredible. Yeah. Dignitas has done such a brilliant job as a team, as a coaching staff, having such successful season, you know, no imports here, you know, five NA, they are five US. crushing it. Yeah. It, it's, it's really, really impressive. Yeah, sorry for Azale. No Canadians in the roster, although obviously there's some great Canadians in the league. But yeah, five Americans coming away with, uh, turns out, five <laughs> NA greater than uh, any other number, unless you're Cloud9. They, they're the one who, who's got you know who's got their ticket here. Otherwise, though, it's beautiful. They can toss or a game and a half behind first, and C9 plays TSM. So it might just be a game behind first going into the last week of the regular season. They're almost playoff locked. They're, they're nearly on the cusp there. Dignitas, just impressive. Can't say enough about how excited I am for their success so far this year. And we're going to see more of it, I'm almost certain. So on the other side, we will hear from Fate God in the Verizon postgame interview. So don't go anywhere.